Hello everyone, welcome to Fearful Greedy. In today's episode, we'll cover Tesla. I will run you through a model I made and tell you about uh, the price that comes out, a quick overview of the company, the good points, the bad points, and it's a great company. It's just that it has a huge fan base, a great CEO, and maybe it has run into a, a too high valuation. We'll see, we'll see at the end of the model. Let's get into it. Before starting, a quick summary of the channel. I cover a portfolio, value investing portfolio, where I keep deploying capital, 500 euros every month, and we see how it goes. At the moment, you can see we're at 10,950 euros, over 15% appreciation on the, la on the 180 days that uh, I have been doing this. And then I cover um, investing topics, right? You can see since the last video, no trade. So the last one was on the 31st of uh, December. And then also, I did the transfer for this month, so 500 euros on the 18th of January. And if you think you like this kind of content, consider leaving a like and also subscribing to the channel to follow along uh, on this journey. So let's get into Tesla. Remember, this is not financial advice. Please do your own research and seek professional advice before investing. So first, I would like to get into some of the pros of, of Tesla, the things going for it, and then some of the cons, the bad things. First, the pros. We have Elon Musk, great CEO, very charismatic, uh, it's a very focused individual and either you love it, you love him or you hate him but he has done a lot and has almost accomplished everything he says he will and I think it's a great asset for Tesla. Then the technology, they are, have some of the top technology in the EV market so uh, I think you cannot argue that and they are a bit ahead of all the competition. Then production, some of the biggest production uh, of the EV market, the biggest one. Uh, so they are already ahead uh, from the competition in that sense. They also have the biggest market share of all the producers. Their product, if you ask any Tesla uh, consumer, you will they will tell you that the product is always improving and it's great, greatly different than other EV cars. Then they have a very cheap battery cost. And finally, their model is a bit different that they don't have a middleman, they don't have car dealerships, and they sell through their store. So that's a big plus for the margins. Then some of the cons. Also, Elon Musk, he can be a bit eccentric. And what might happen is uh, he's a great asset, but it's a two-edged sword, right? So it, you can get hurt by it also, right? So for now, he's doing great things. Uh, but it's a bit unpredictable, I will say that. Then what we have is cheaper competition, so the competition can be doing uh, cheaper cars, right? Also, uh, the car industry is a low margin business. I know they have other segments. They, I will give them credit so they will have a higher margin than other car manufacturers, but not by a ridiculous amount, so they will have a a higher margin but they won't be like a software company right so like a google or something like that then they have a high entry price so for their products uh, you it doesn't go under 30 35 thousand dollars right so it's a high entry price for someone that wanna get their product then it's mostly an improvement company most of the cash flows uh, for the business will be very far in the future right so what it means is it has done great things at the moment, but most of the great things that we expect from the company are very far in the future. So that's some of the cons. So it, it's not proven yet. In 2019, uh, 2.1 million cars were sold uh, globally, right? And in 2020, Tesla has sold almost half a million, right? So that would be 25% uh, of, of, the, of the previous year amount. We have yet to see the full number for this year, but yeah, they are between 15 and 25 percent of the car market of, of the ev car market uh, so definitely a huge huge player so this is the global car sales model i i did uh, first on blue we can see the total car sales on orange we can see that eventually the ev car sales will take over until 100 percent and then uh, the tesla market share who will will pick around 2028 and then on 25% and then keep dropping on 15% do the enormous amount of car production, right? Uh, also on grade, you can see the amount of car sales for Tesla. 
uh, the left axis is on millions for all the bars and then the percentage is for the market share right uh, now i will tell you about the assumption i feel they are as good as any other model first the main reason for doing this valuation is just to try to show how far into the future we have to look for this valuation to make sense first the assumptions i i did first is two to one percent global car sales until 2050 then if you having 95 percent of sales on 2050 or more tesla picking at 25 percent market share of uh, global electric vehicle uh, sales then uh, tesla having a 15 percent at the end of the model on 2050 tesla improving their margin on 12 percent at the moment is like two percent maybe eight uh, percent is like one of the best manufacturers in the world in car production so i give them higher than that so 12 percent i don't think more than that is plausible right then uh, tesla producing 10 million units on 2040 and 17 million units a year on 2050 right and also we to this valuation making sense uh, inflation has to keep in check and also we have to be in a low interest rate environment if not the numbers change a lot especially so far into the future then present value that i come out it's 473 billion for tesla and that's a dollar amount per share around 500 dollars right so at the moment it's at 800 or so so we can see already even doing all these assumptions uh, we're at a much higher valuation right so the margin of safety is below zero around minus 40 percent margin of safety on current valuation and then uh, the margin of error through this model is over 100 percent so if you know a bit about probability you will know that all these assumptions so uh, they will all have to be true so a b c d f g h all of them through and you would have to unite all these probabilities right uh, they are not they might be the most probable outcome but they are still maybe 30 percent probable right so if you add all these out the probability of this outcome being exactly like this is super slim like almost none but it's still the most probable outcome right but it's just so far into the future we had to make so many assumptions that uh, so a diagram like this you will have to have all of them through uh, at the end to this model be exactly right right and so far into the future that's not possible so i think it's a flawed model i wouldn't use it for any other valuation because i wouldn't give a company as much credit as i did in this model right first you cannot discount cash flows for 30 years in the future this is not a bond so these cash flows will uh, modulate a lot and in 30 years who knows how they would look like right and uh, then you should only assume cash flows that you have a very conviction of right and i'm not super convinced of this 30 year into the future cash flows right then uh even if you discount these cash flows uh they are so far into the future that they shouldn't even register uh, for the current present value right um, if you do and if you do models frequently you will know what i'm talking about and then i said i wouldn't use it i wouldn't use anything like this because the probability of this outcome it's highly highly unlikely right i chase the current valuation if i didn't know the price i wouldn't give it as much credit so i had to make i tried to make sense of the current valuation to reflect it uh, on the model right so you should never do that you should never check prices do your model and then do the then check the price right uh, so it's all flawed yeah, in between so now for a more in-depth uh, update on the portfolio you can see that what happened is i still have the all the same positions i just had a huge appreciation on uh, most of them just but the minerals didn't turn up so good actually about badla minerals i learned that on the annual meeting they did uh, they tried to push like some uh, loan for one of the major shareholders company i don't like that practice at all i don't know if it was passed i'm uh, contacting management but i will stay on the position wait until building it uh, bigger right because i want to know the answer to that because 
that can mean that the cache is there, but mm, maybe it's not reachable in the near future. So maybe at the moment I'll, I will just hold until I get an answer from management and then uh, assess from that. Here we are in share site, right? Uh, we can see that devolution since the last time we were here, uh, we had some good appreciation, right? Uh, almost 20% on the capital gain and a total return over 15%. I also updated a bit the spreadsheet. Remember that you have a link on the description to keep track of the portfolio. There you have the transactions, uh, dividends, deposits, price history, and a bit of an overview of the portfolio, right? Uh, I added the year-to-date performance, the money-weighted rate of return, so it's over 40%. We have been 180 days, uh, 89 days, uh, with the portfolio start with on 13th of July. So some extra information. Remember, you can always get in here and check all the positions, right? Uh, well, that's all for me. Uh, this month I have some cash running in, so expect some buys for the next video, uh, maybe on the existing positions so some rebalance or some new positions, who knows? Uh, well, everyone be safe. See you on the next one.